Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Includability Shorts, a series of short snappy chats stuffed with hot tips from our incredible includability partner experts. I'm delighted to be joined by the amazing Katie Maycock, stress and burnout specialist. Katie, it's so wonderful to see you as always and so many topics we could talk through around your brilliant field of expertise. You've had so much success in helping to align a company's business strategy with well-being so that everyone from the top down can just rock up and just be the, be the very best versions of themselves. But what would be your hot tips for helping to manage stress within the workplace to allow that to happen? So that's a really, really good question. And I think it can be really challenging to sort of get it right at the end of the day. Um, but what companies really have to do, and, and I'm just sort of going to tell a little bit about what I've seen over the last five years or well, six years working in this space. And I really love to see the change in the perception towards well-being in the workplace, which has been so lovely to see with companies taking it more seriously. I've got some crazy stories of what happened when I first came into the industry and they, people didn't take it seriously. But it's really nice to see that companies are making well-being a really big focal point because there's such a recognition of the importance of, you know, people's well-being and how they can actually come to work and perform at a high level sustainably, which is a really important conversation there, which is the sustainability part. Um, so what I would be saying with my hot tips with companies to help them align their well-being strategy with their business strategy is to make sure that you actually build both of them together and really understand the potential, what could go wrong and what can go right. So you're not having this conflict of interest when you've got a really robust well-being strategy but you can't execute it appropriately because maybe something's happened in the business strategy and so it's having that miss sort of alignment of communication right like telling people to take care of themselves but then giving them deadlines that just don't make sense that actually is going to cause stress within the workplace right so that would be my first really hot tip is just to make sure that you all sit down as a senior leadership team get all the managers that are involved to actually understand what you know that alignment looks like and how to execute it so that's the first thing the second thing that i would really get you to understand is the people that are going to be driving this in the business are the senior leadership teams it is the people management it's the team leaders so you have to get their buy-in to make sure that they are executing it and actually creating objections uh, not objections objectives around them for the year so they actually can execute that right so rewarding them for actually pushing through the well-being strategy that's a really important one as well it's really difficult when you have a really robust well-being strategy that is there to take care of your support your, your team and support your team but then you have senior leadership teams that either aren't bought into it or don't really understand it or aren't rewarded for actually pushing it forward so you're not changing that sort of culture and so again there's a misalignment which is going to cause a distrust disengagement all that kind of stuff so making sure the leadership teams are there. The other thing that I would really be recommending is making sure that your leadership teams really understand the warning signs when someone's sort of going from working really well under pressure, because pressure is a good thing when they're starting to slip into stress, which is going to be the polar opposite of working well under pressure and some of the warning signs of going towards burnout. Understanding that framework of when stress, where when pressure goes into stress is so, so important and understanding how to spot it and how to intervene effectively as a company as a whole, but also individually as a leadership team. So that's something that you've really got to, you've really got to do as well. You've also really got to make sure that what you're doing is hitting and what you're doing is actually making an impact. So making sure that you're talking to your employees. Yes, you can do surveys. Yes, you can do pulse, you know, you can do pulses or whatever you want, but talk to the employees build those relationships up. They're going to tell you what's working and what's not working if you've created an environment where they feel like they can trust you. So then it comes back to that psychological safety where people have, the, you know, they feel comfortable to have those conversations. So that's definitely something that I'd recommend. Have those conversations. Yes, do pulse surveys. See what's hitting and what's landing and what's not and keep pivoting. It's And if you're coming from a place where you've never really had a robust well-being strategy and people are really disenchanted, they've got that lackluster, it's not going to be an overnight fix. You have to build it up. You have to really look at the culture. You have to really start putting the people at the main focal point and allow them 
to grow that trust. Trust isn't given overnight, right? You've got to rebuild it up. So that's another thing just as a little tangent that I could go on. So just making sure you're doing that. And then also just looking at the environment that you've created. Are people allowed to actually create stress management solutions for themselves? You know, if you're sitting there saying to somebody, we really want to make sure that you're rocking up as the best version of you or the version that you can rock up, you know, the, your authentic self at work, but you're not giving them the space to sort of have 10 minutes when they've had a difficult call, having 10 minutes when they're a bit stressed out just to catch themselves. If you haven't created an environment where they feel like they can actually, you know, even in their downtime, have stress management techniques, that's a conversation you have to look at, right? You know, so if you're, so if you've got a culture where it's okay to contact employees and colleagues outside of work hours, contacting them on the weekends or whatever it is, you're not allowing that person that time to decompress to be able to do their work efficiently and effectively, right? And so really having that understanding of what does that environment look like? Are you giving your employees enough time to have that stress management? So for another example is just thinking about someone's commute into business, into the into the company, right? If you need people in the office, what's their commute like? If you are somebody that's taking two hours to get to the office and two hours to get home, that's four hours out of the day that, you, you know, they're spending on the train. That's not stress management. That's not giving them that decompressed time. So really understanding what that looks like for each person as well. So there are a couple of things that I would look at, some of the things that you can start actioning. And don't go for quick fixes. Like, just don't, like, really understand well-being, understand your culture, understand how it's, how you're, you know, communicating that across to your employees. Is it landing? Develop empathetic listening so you're listening to what people are saying and really understanding their perspective, you know, their perception of the situation rather than what you think they should be seeing. Really have that and really think about that human-led part and stop thinking so much around what you need them to achieve and what you're doing see how it's being perceived katie that is absolutely brilliant thank you so much so much um incredible wealth of knowledge and thank you so much for all of your time and and sharing all of that it's invaluable to enable organizations to be the most effective and to instill that quality culture in place that's as always and to everyone who has just watched our latest includability short, thank you so much for joining us. For more of these light bulb moments from Katie and our includability community, please do head over to our weareincludability.co.uk website, or of course you can check out our YouTube channel and please do give us a follow on LinkedIn. In the meantime, let's keep learning, let's keep growing, and let's keep making our workplaces more inclusive, diverse, and mentally healthy together. Have a great day, everyone.